What a wonderful day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I think one of the things that sometimes in religion that we miss is the call of God to rejoice, that we should be joyful people, that we should recognize the joy and the blessing of God. You know, Jeremiah, in the first reading today, he's kind of hung up on some of the problems he has, some of the people around him, some of the way people are acting, and he's asking God to help him and God to give him strength. Even in his questioning, he knows that God is with him. And that is what we must realize, that God is with us. And if that's true, nothing else can hurt. It says in the second reading about the whole idea that we have been redeemed by that one who has come to save us. Oh yes, yeah, sin came into the world through one man, through Adam. But much more than that has come into the world through Jesus, the Son of God, who has come into the world to give us new life, to make us divine. For we in baptism inherit that greatness of God. We are called to be with him priest, prophet, and king, and that we are empowered to do that, and we must feel that power. The gospel also gives us encouragement because the gospel tells us that God has much promise for us, that God is concerned about each and every one of us, that God loves us, even has numbered our hairs of our head. That's how important we are. We are more important than the beautiful birds that soar through the air. We are more important than the beautiful flowers in the fields. We are God's gift to the world, and God is our gift. And that is what we come here to celebrate today, to celebrate the greatness of God's love, and to be able to see that love even in the midst of this world, even in the midst of the difficulties, the pain, the suffering. We must not be overcome by the things of this world, for we have a greater gift, the everlasting love of God in the kingdom of heaven. And no one can take that from us, for God will take care of us. Jesus will present us to the Father if we are faithful to him. And so as I come here today, I want to tell you people, be joyful people, be happy people, be filled with love, and know that that is really the expression of our faith, not to be worried about a God who might condemn us, for only God condemns those who do condemn themselves, but that we must be people who live out that faith. We must not be disturbed by those things of this world that bother us. I have a saying that I've driven my parishioners insane with, that when I die it will be shot to death with popcorn, because it isn't the big things that make a difference in our life. So often we become overwhelmed by the nitty gritty of every day, by the disappointments, by what happens to us, by even sickness and difficulty. <laughs> but we cannot let those things control our life. We must let Jesus control our life. We must be controlled by the hope and the love that we all have in Jesus. We cannot let the popcorn overtake us. I've gone through a lot in the last four months. I was in 90, almost 90 days of rehab, and I'm still doing rehab, and I still will be doing it. But that doesn't make any difference, because I know that my life is meaningful. I know that my life is blessed by God. I know that God walks with me as he walks with each and every one of you. And that is an important concept. If we are loved by God, who can take that away from us? No one, no one, no thing, no problem, no suffering, no darkness. For that greatness of God's love is far greater than any of the problems of this world. And even those who try to destroy us, they cannot destroy us if we are faithful to God, if we are faithful to the eternal kingdom to which we are called. About eight weeks ago now, I was in St. Anne's laying there about three o'clock in the morning. Don't sleep much. Some of you have gotten texts and emails from me at two o'clock in the morning, and they don't know why. But I was laying there, and I, a voice came to me, and I was kind of not a voice, but I heard this. You know, I once said, you know, when it's time for me to leave Holy Cross, I'll know it. 
Okay. So I'm laying there in bed and I'm thinking, hmm, I can't walk. I can't get out of bed. I can't even go to the janitor myself. What's the Lord saying to me? And he's saying, well, maybe it's time. So I call up the bishop, okay? And Father White and the bishop and Father Tommaso, and they came to see me. We talked about it. We talked about the whole idea that, yes, it is time. But as the bishop said, it's not retirement. Don't use that word, retirement, okay? I ain't retiring, okay? And you'll know that because I'll be around. But I am leaving the administration. I am leaving the running of the parish in great hands. Father Gagne is a fantastic priest and pastor, and he'll lead you greatly. And yeah, we're leaving you with Father George and Father John and Deacon Joe. What a great gift you have in our ordained staff. And they will guide you and they will lead you as I have. And I know that you will love them as you have loved me. I know that same spirit of the parish will always be alive because it was alive a long time before I came here. One priest once said to me, you know, when you leave Holy Cross, it'll fall apart. I said to him, you don't know anything about the ecclesiology of Holy Cross. It will not fall apart because it is the people who make it strong. And you will continue to do that because you are people who love, you are people who give, you are people who struggle and overcome the difficulties in order to be able to live the joy of being Catholic. What a great gift. You are called in baptism to be a brother of Jesus or a sister of Jesus. You're called to be one with the Father. You're called to be sanctified by the Spirit. That's a great gift. Thank God for that gift. Thank God for the way he touches us and the blessings he gives us. And don't take anything for granted. You know, look at the people around you. They love you. And you love them. Sometimes they can be crotchety like I am. Sometimes they can be difficult. Sometimes they can drive you right up a tree. But they love you. They love you very much. And that's important. And maybe if we take a new look, we'll even see more love. And maybe in some people we don't see any love, we'll be able to see love. It depends on how we look at people. You know, Jesus sees love in all of us. His love is unconditional. You are all loved by him. It's a great thing. You know, love, he went so far as to die on the cross. To offer his life, to be nailed to a cross for you, for me, for everyone. He did not pick out people and say, I'm just going to die for those that I like. I'm going to die for all of you. I'm going to die even for sinners. And we're all kind of sinners. So we need to appreciate that. And then the great gift of the Eucharist. We come here today around the table of the Lord. There is no other way that I would celebrate anything, whether my 50th or my leaving, or whatever it is. It has to be motivated and rooted in the Eucharist. What a great God we have. Jesus, who gave his body and blood for us. He gave us his come, come eat, come drink. This is the body of Christ. This is the blood of Christ. What a wonderful gift. How renewed we should be, how strengthened we should be, how enthusiastic we should be as we go forth from the Eucharist inspired by Jesus who loves us, who shares himself with us, who nourishes us so that we can have the strength to love in a world that does not always know love. Don't be Pollyanna. Don't believe that there is no problems, no evil. That is not reality. But in the midst of that, we can have strength and we can have endurance and we can overcome because we have the power and the strength of the body and blood of Christ. You know, we live in an age where, <laughs> for some reason, and I can't understand it, that as many of us Catholics are going to church on a regular basis. And I don't mean to preach to the choir here, but I do want to say to those who are not here, or not here on a regular basis, we need you. We love you. And I want you to be able to not go to church. That does not do any good. But tell them the joy of receiving Jesus. The power that it gives you, the love that it bestows upon you, the ways that it inspires you to live a different life. 
to see people in different ways in the world, to see the reality of love. You know, the more you look for goodness, the more goodness you're going to find. We live in a world that really looks for evil, really looks for, you know, frailty, really looks for mistakes, just like Jeremiah was talking about. People are always trying to bring other people down. Whether you're a celebrity or the next door neighbor, they will always rejoice in a way because you have fallen on your face. But that's not good people. People that are inspired lift us up. People that are inspired by love, they do not look for our frailties. They look for our blessings, they look for the good things of love that is ours. And that is important, that all of us do that. You're gonna find a lot more love than you will find evil. Don't listen to the news and believe that. Don't listen to, the, look at the newspaper. They only write bad things. They only write evil things. Once in a while, you'll see a nice column about something good, but it's rare, okay? And especially, especially I appeal to you not to judge our youth by what you see the press say about our young people. Teenager does this, teenagers does that. Young people do, they're never a good thing. Yet our young people are beautiful people. They are great people. And that's what I'm so proud of the Holy Cross because of the programs we have here for our young people. Our religious ed program, our sacramental program, our youth ministry program. What a great thing it is to see these young people. Look at these servers here. What a great gift they are to us and how they show us the way to Jesus. That's what inspires us. It is the young. I don't worry about the future because these people are going to take care of the future because they're filled with love and goodness. And I see that all over the place. Our wonderful Catholic school. Oh, what a great gift that is to our parish. What a great gift it is to our parish. And everybody has to go to Catholic school, but it certainly helps. It's one way that we can support parents, and it's one way that we can nourish our young. For if we're going to make a change in this world, we're too late, at least I am. But it's the young people who will do that, and that's why we need to educate them. That's why we need to reach out to them. That's why we need to reassure their parents that they are great parents. They are seeking what is right. So through religious ed and through our Catholic school, we are able to touch our young. And through our youth program, CYO, it's not just basketball, it's not just cheerleading. It's a really program of ministry on behalf of the parish. They go out and they touch people, they love people, they show the goodness of people. They do it all the time. There's a whole list of things that they do. They're always there to support the parish. So we thank them. So we come here today because we have been called to be members of Holy Cross. We have been called and touched by the love of God and by the love of each other. You inspire me. I've always been inspired. That's why these 35 years went by like, ah, it was over. I couldn't believe it. 35 years, but 35 years of love. 35 years of people who care. 35 years of being really church, gathering around the Eucharistic table, sharing with others love, encouraging one another. I've seen it again and again and again. You are blessed people, and all of you. I sit here today and I mentioned our priest staff, the deacon, but also my lay staff, all of you, that are so important to our parish. Those of the present, those of the past, that have made our parish great. It's the ones, you are the ones who do it. I mean, I was just a guide. I speak of myself as like the leader of the symphony. I keep you in rhythm. You do all the work. That's how we run a parish. That's what's important about a parish. And all of you have taken your part. All of you have played your instrument. All of you have given part of yourself to be part of that whole community that's brought forth great things. Our choirs, our, our, our bell choir, our adult choir, our, uh, our, I'm going for words, okay, our contemporary music group, okay, what a great gift you are to us, that wonderful music that we've heard today. I know that Sarah and, uh, that Sarah is leaving us, and I know that our director of music choir is leaving, but we'll still go on because we have all you wonderful people sitting up there in the church and down here, up in the choir loft and there giving your gift of God's praising by music. He who sings praises God twice. You did a wonderful job. You do a great job. 
So I want to thank Hannah and for all that she's done with our choir, our bell choir, all of you who made our liturgy so great. Our liturgies here are fantastic. There are ways for all of us to enter into the fullness of God. I could go on and on for 35 years, actually. <laughs> I want to thank the bishops, Bishop Salvatore, for his great love and support, for letting me stay here extra years, for Bishop Clark, who was such a great bishop, who let me stay on after 70. I want to thank all the priests. You are my brothers. I love you deeply. I love to have you here at a dinner, and I love to share with you at your places. You are very special. The fraternity of priests is actually a very important gift. And many of my friends who go back a long time before there was a life before Holy Cross that have been with me since seminary days, those who have been with me and grown up with me, and my nephew Tom, who's here representing my family. Tom has come all the way to be with us from St. Louis. That's where the rest of my family is, except my two nieces who are down in North Carolina. I'm a New York State orphan. They all moved out to St. Louis. <laughs> my brother Jack is still an 89 going strong. He worked, walks better than I do. And he's always got some joke, something going on. He's always got a message for me. My niece and her husband, Eliza and Mark. My uh, other nephew, Dan. My family has always been close to me. My brother, da Father Dan, my sister Mary. The sister Mary who brought me up, she's a saint. Anybody who puts up a four-year-old like me has to be a saint. <laughs> she brought me up, but she also taught me a lot. Taught me how to love God. Taught me how to care about people. That's what my family did. They all did it in their own special ways. So family, family is so important. Everyone, look at your family. What a great gift they are. What a great sign of love. So lest I go on for 35 hours, I want to say to you, I love you. And I know there is no question that you love me. And I just ask you to continue to look for new ways to love, to share, to bring joy into our church, to make our church a church of people, a church of ministry of touching one another and loving one another, for that is what church is. Love, love one another as I have loved you. God bless and peace be with you.